In this lecture, as I uh, told you earlier, that we are going to uh, drive the velocity profile, most importantly. And also, we will look at uh, these uh, six uh, parameters. The one is obviously is the velocity profile. And second one is the average velocity that uh, we are entering into the uh, inlet of the pipe. But uh, how to find out this average velocity in the middle of the pipe, somewhere in the pipe length? and also maximum velocity and its location and the pressure drop along the pipe formula Darcy friction factor or simply friction factor which is uh, like for example given here in this form and uh, skin friction coefficient or coefficient of friction is relationship to the Darcy friction factor uh, we can find out the skin friction coefficient by this formula which you can see over here and this involves the wall shear stress the CF and F are different things and uh, we can find out relationship between these two. And the last thing that you can see is the formula for friction factor in terms of the Reynolds number, that is the, this one. Okay, so in the previous lecture, if you remember that uh, we have derived the, uh, this relationship and with these boundary conditions and uh, we got this one from the, actually from the X component, okay? This is the X component, in fact. Axial component you can you can mention with the Z or uh, with the symbol as X. So Z and X, they are denoting basically the axial component along the pipe length. So here we have the relationship. And so I just wrote down this thing exactly over here. So what we want to find out, we want to find out the relationship, uh, the velocity profile that is the uh, velocity at this point that is the u r as a function of the radius u as a function of the radius so now you can start from this equation and uh, simply you can integrate equation uh, by two times and you will get the uh, uh, general equation and then put these boundary conditions and you will get the exactly the profile for this uh, uh, problem here so now let, let's uh, integrate the equation. So I will write down this. And also, uh, I mentioned this thing in the previous lecture, the dp by dx, the pressure gradient is constant. So here, what we are doing is that, uh, and so is the viscosity. The r is not constant. So I'm going to do is like this, the dp by dx, and uh, one upon mu. And here we have the r dr is equal to d r d u by d r. So there is no need to write down u x because we know this is exactly the velocity along the x direction. So you can write down this as a d u by d r. Okay, and the pressure gradient is along the x direction and the velocity uh, is function of the radius which is over here. Okay, so uh, after forming equation in this way, now uh, the next thing is that uh, we are going to uh, integrate the equation. So uh, this is constant, this, these two things are constant. And also I will, I will tell you that there are some other methods also that you can drive exactly same equation, but I'm going through the Navier-Stokes equations and this is the form we are getting. Second uh, way is that you can use the uh, uh, the this form basically this form is uh, this form okay so you can use this form and uh, so instead of using the tau wall you can make it dp by d I will tell you this thing after this uh, derivation. So minus two by two R and simply because this was the wall shear stress, but if you put the wall, the shear stress anywhere here, this is like uh, shear stress zero here. So this will become the minus two by R because now R is a variable here and the wall shear stress you can find out in terms of the uh, derivative. Okay, we can convert this derivative uh, from R to Y. So I will, I will show you this thing, but right now we are de deriving uh, from the uh, Navier-Stokes equations, momentum equation, then we are putting the boundary conditions. So here we have the, this will be the same one upon mu, the dp by dx, 
and r square upon 2 is equal to this will be exactly same way because the derivative will be cancelled out by the integration so we get the uh, because we have to integrate the both sides this will be like this and uh, we get the r du by dr and then we have the constant of integration which is the c1 okay now uh, you can divide the whole equation by the r so this will becomes the uh, 1 upon mu the db by dx r square upon 2 into r is equal to r upon r du by dr plus c1 by r. So r are cancelled, 1 r is cancelled from here. So we get the equation 1 upon mu dp by dx r upon 2 is equal to du by dr plus c1 upon r. Okay, uh, now we can multiply uh, this whole equation with the dr. So, but before that I want to write down this equation in this way. So, that the du by uh, dr will be equal to c1 upon r minus 1 upon mu dp by dx into r upon 2. Okay. So now what is going to happen is that now I can uh, integrate this equation with respect to the this whole the whole thing. You can also multiply with the dr, so this dr will be here, but right now, right now we can do it like this. So what is going to happen is that this uh, derivative will be cancelled out and this whole equation has the dr. So this becomes the... Uh, Okay, I am just making a, a small change here. So basically the constant of integration C1 can be, uh, you can put it on this side and this will become the minus sign. Again, this will be some other integration constant. So a minus sign or something like uh, multiplying with the two or any number will not make any difference here. So instead of writing here, uh, I would like to write this C1 over. This will make the things simpler in terms of the processing. So write down the C1 here. Okay, so now uh, divide this whole equation by the dr, multiply the whole equation by dr by r. So this becomes the minus 1 upon mu dp by dx into r square upon 2, and 2 this will be the uh, dr by r, so 1 r will be cancelled out, plus c1 dr by r is equal to now this will be directly cancel out these two terms and we get the du here. Okay, so now we can integrate this whole both sides, this whole equation. And uh, what we will get is that we get the u as a function of radius. And this is equal to now, definitely you can see here that this is going to be equal to, this is the r now single, the r r cancelled, so now we have the r only. So this will be the uh, 1 upon mu uh, dp by dx is a constant. This will be r square upon 2. So 2 is already 1 there, so this will be 2 into 2 is equal to 4. Plus c1 and 1 upon r integration will be equal to log of r. So now this is the equation that we are going to use for this problem. Now next thing is that and definitely uh, after integrating, integrating we have the second uh, constant also that is the c2. So now you can put it in this way. And in order to find out the these constants, we have to put these boundary conditions which are over here. So I would suggest that uh, we start from this equation. So this equation is this one, that is the 1 upon so this is the r du by dr is equal to 1 upon mu the dp by dx r square upon 2 plus c1. So now from this equation and the first boundary condition when r is equal to r. So this r becomes the capital R and the u is 0. So definitely if u is 0 then du, du by dr also 0 and similarly here when the r is equal to r so what we get is that this this will be equal to 0 
and uh, so we are left with uh, 1 upon mu dp by dx and which condition we are using at r is equal to r the velocity is equal to 0. So this is going to be the r square upon 2 plus c1. So the c1 is equal to minus 1 upon mu the dp by dx r square upon 2. Okay. Yes, it is r square upon 2 in this equation. So first integration constant we just found out and uh, uh, one more thing is that, okay, uh, sorry for the again a confusion, so uh, one minute. Now this is not a right way to uh, deal with this equation, so let me delete this whole thing. Actually, I cannot use the derivative condition, uh, the, this velocity condition for derivative. So, uh, what we can do is that we can use directly this formula. Okay, so here, the r du by dr is equal to 1 upon mu dp by dx r square upon 2 plus c1. So boundary condition that we are going to use is that du by dr is equal to 0 at r is equal to 0. So this becomes 0. This is also 0. So 0 into 0 will be 0 and this is 0. So c1 will be equal to 0. Simple. Okay. And the second boundary condition is that, that the, the at r is equal to r, the u is equal to u is equal to 0. So at r is equal to r, u is equal to 0. This is not a right, uh, before uh, this, the first condition was that the derivative at center point, this is center point, is 0. So now we use the second uh, condition. So this u is 0 is equal to 1 upon mu dp by dx r square upon 4 plus, uh, now this will be c1 log of r plus c, okay, c1 is 0, so this term will be also 0, and then the c2. So we can find out the c2 is equal to uh, minus 1 upon mu dp by dx r square upon 4, and the c1 is also 0. So now we can directly use this equation, this equation which is here. And now simply put these constants here. So the C1 is equal to 0. Okay, let me let me delete this uh, line here. And C2 is over here. So the UR will be equal to uh, 1 upon mu dp by dx r square upon 4. And uh, this is the minus 1 upon mu dp by dx and r square upon 4. Okay. So what values we have the common? One, 1 upon mu and 4. So 1 upon 4 mu is a, is, a, is a constant. And also we have the dp by dx. We can take it out. And uh, then we have the inside we have the r square upon r square minus r square. Okay. Uh, but the final form that uh, we want is basically is this one, which you can see over here. So we can also take out the minus sign and capital R square. So this will become, so take the minus sign and also capital R square. So this R square upon 4 mu dp by dx. And this will become the, now minus sign will become positive sign and positive sign will become negative sign. This will be equal to 1 minus r square upon r square. Okay. This become the r square upon r square capital. 
this is a formula uh, for the velocity profile and this velocity pro profile as you can see from the form this is the parabolic velocity profile and this is for the laminar pipe flow 